Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. We're continuing on this butt series for you guys. Got a good one for you guys. We have a single leg Romanian deadlift. Now this is an incredible movement and I think it's a foundational movement that everybody should learn to do. So I'm gonna teach it. It can be a little advanced, but I'm also gonna show you some regressions to it so everybody can do this movement. All right, let's talk about you guys' starting position and your posture for this movement. Now, some of you may be wondering why we have a Romanian deadlift here for one of the best glute exercises. The reason why this is such a great exercise is because one, learning the stability and strength to balance on one leg and do a hip hingement movement is one of the best things you can possibly do to help develop the glutes. Since the glutes are the prime mover for a hip hingement movement, learning to do it on one leg is incredibly important. I think everybody should do this, whether you do it with or without weights or you regress it. So we're gonna start off in the regress position. So this is the easier way for most people to get started. So you'll notice that I have kettlebells. The reason why I'm using kettlebells, this is easier for me to teach my clients because it's elevated up off the ground. Sometimes if I don't have access to kettlebells, I'll use uh, yoga blocks or I'll use two benches where they can set the dumbbells on because getting all the way to the ground and balancing on one leg for a lot of people is really challenging when you're first learning this exercise. So we are gonna start with the regression, meaning this is the easier way for you to do this. The goal is to get to the point where we're balancing completely on one leg, but we're gonna use a trail leg just to help you stabilize since it's really challenging. So I'm gonna get back on a toe. So my back foot is just to help with the stability right now, because what we're learning, what we want to learn to do is we want to learn to hinge at the hips to pick these weights up. Now, most people are going to bend over to grab the weights, especially when we go to a single leg. It's really challenging to teach this. So this is the probably the most important cue is this setup is getting yourself. And I like to start with my foot about center in the kettlebells or dumbbells, whatever you have. I step back on my toe and the first cue, again, that karate chop at the hips. So I slide the hips back. That also kind of rotates the pelvis. So you're sticking the butt out as you come back and you hinge over. So when I get down to grab these kettlebells, I should have a nice neutral rigid spine still. I do not want to be in the rounded position or else I'm already breaking down in form. So before I even grab these, I hinge at the hips. I get myself in the starting position. Then I want to take the slack out. So my arms are locked and straight. I feel tension in my upper back and my back is nice and level and straight. And then I thrust the hips forward. And when I go to hinge back, I go a step back, touch that toe for balance, then hinge at the hips, slowly bring it down to the ground, reset yourself, go through your cues again, make sure you have that nice rigid spine, arms are nice and straight. I feel good tension back here in the hamstring and the glutes, all of it's here. This back foot, all I'm using that for is to help me out with my stability because I'm just learning how to do this movement. And then I hinge forward. When I hinge forward, I'm thinking about driving the pelvis forward with my glutes squeezing my butt. Don't arch the back here. Squeeze the butt, thrust the pelvis forward. Step back with that toe for stability. Break at the hips. Decelerate nice and slow and controlled. Reset, same thing again. Posture, brace the core, abs tight. Thrust the hips forward. All right, let's talk about some of the ways that you know you're doing this exercise correctly or some of the ways that you know you're doing this uh, exercise incorrectly. Uh, one of the ways that you know you're doing it incorrectly is if we're not feeling this in the butt at all and the hamstrings at all. Those, those are the primary movers in this. The quads are involved, absolutely. So are the calves and other muscles that are involved in stabilizing uh, the hip. But the prime mover should be the glute that drives you and the hamstring that drives the hips forward. So if you're feeling it in a lot of other muscles, uh, then something could be wrong. It is common though for people that when I teach this exercise for the very first time, uh, that's also why I like to use the back trail leg to stabilize. A lot of times clients will feel it in their calves like crazy. Now that's normal. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong or it's bad. It's because you have a lot of instability in the hip. And so what's having to work is your foot. Your foot's trying to grip the ground while you have all this instability, which is causing the calf to fire like crazy. And then your calves end up burning more than you even feel. That's totally normal. We'll progress through that as you start to strengthen your guys' hips and get good at the stability part. So this is also, again, like I said, why I like to teach first with you having that trail leg to help stabilize because then the calf doesn't have to work and fire 
so much. The other common way you know you're doing this wrong is when you go to do this movement and you feel in the low back and the upper back a lot. And that means we have a lot of movement in your spine when you're going to do this hip thrusting movement forward. So that's why it's important to keep it rigid. You'll notice all the movements that we've been teaching so far for the glutes, you know, all these are hip hingement type movements. And so the spine, you want to keep neutral. So the, even the dowel bar tool that I taught you guys before, where you put the stick behind your back and keep those three points of contact, that still applies here. So I could use that stick if I'm having a hard time teaching a client or I'm struggling keeping that neutral spine, I'll keep that stick there to teach them how they need to hinge into that position so they know how to get right into the correct posture before they pull up. The other common mistake is people have slack in the arms and then they'll come up with the hips first and then you see this rounding of the back as they come up. So when you get back, hinge back, you get into this position, I wanna make sure my arms are nice and tight. So I feel tight, I feel tension all the way from my back down through my arms, there's no slack in here, it's nice and tight. I feel the tension already in the glutes. Now all I'm thinking about is my abs, that's the very last cue is brace the core, abs tight, and then it's thrust the hips forward. Toe goes back for stability, break at the hips, nice rigid spine, abs tight, tension out of the arms, thrust forward. And notice I'm using this other foot to help stabilize. Now, the way you progress this movement, as you get good, then we can get to the point where we bring that trail leg up off the ground. All the same rules apply. Break at the hips, keep that good neutral spine. You get down in that position, take the slack out. I should feel tension in the hamstring, tension in the glutes, brace the core, abs tight, thrust the hips forward. Slowly decelerate, good neutral spine. Reset, get everything tight, good tension, brace the core, thrust forward. Another common thing you'll see when people do this is as you decelerate into the, into the single leg squat here, or the hinge, excuse me, of the deadlift, you'll see your knee wanting to kind of collapse in a little bit. Fight that, keep that knee open or neutral. You don't need to force it out. If you force it out, you might fall over, but you don't want it to collapse. It'll want to collapse in for leverage, especially if you have a weak glute mead. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and those coaching cues on the single leg Romanian deadlift. Listen, when you first start off with this movement, do not be afraid to do just your body weight until you get the mechanics down. But this is one of the single best movements I think that I've ever taught my clients for all ages. So this is a great, great movement and you will see tons of carryover into your other compound exercises and big movements. And you'll definitely see a big difference in your glute development if you do this correctly. Listen, if you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe and share. Also turn on your notifications. We're dropping videos at least three to four times per week. And if you want more information on how to build a butt, we have a free guide. All you have to do is click the link above.